picture this. The year is 2008. I get invited to my friend's summer birthday party where we are all invited to go see a movie. That movie being Inkheart. I know nothing about this movie. I go in, I sit down, I see the beautifulness that is Brendan Fraser and the beautifulness of Paul Bettany and I am enthralled. I am also a reader. A, a movie about going into books and pulling your favorite characters out of books, that is my cup of tea. So I immediately go to the Half Price Bookstore and buy the entire trilogy. So this week we're reading the first book of the Inkart trilogy. <laughs> channel. I'm so glad you could join me today. This is going to be the very first reading vlog on this channel. It will probably be a short video, much shorter than a lot of the other ones I have done on this channel. We will be talking about one of my childhood favorites, Inkheart. So this was a situation of I was eight years old, I saw the movie first, and the movie enticed me. Of course, as, as movies often do with little kids. I was looking up the cast for this movie, like just in research before I started filming this introduction. It's stacked, dude. In that introduction, I mentioned uh, Brendan Fraser and Paul Bettany, but like Jennifer Connelly's in it and Helen Mirren and Andy Serkis plays a villain that's not CG. And he's really good in it. Like I remember him distinctly being terrifying. Finding out that it was Andy Serkis though was like a major plot twist. Like I was not expecting Gollum as Capricorn, the villain of this book. So I was thinking about that movie and then I was like, you know what, I think it's time for an Inkheart reread since it's been several years since I've read it. On this video, you are gonna see me read the first book of Inkheart. If you see me, I'm filming this introduction after I film the rest of this, but if you hear me allude to how I wanna read the other two books, that is not a lie, but it will not be in this video. I gave myself a little bit of a time crunch and then I got sick. So we're only going to be talking about the first in cart, but you know, it'll be a nice chill video. I won't be talking super much. I'll, I'll, I, I stop about a quarter of the way through each section. This is going to be a pretty light spoiler video. I will put somewhere along the bottom here if, uh, I talk about any spoilers and like what time to skip to if you don't want to hear anything. The book is 20 years old though. The first Inkheart book came out in 2003. So if you haven't read it, I don't know if it's still in print. I'm sure you can find it somewhere. But if you haven't read it, this whole video is just a advertisement to get you to do that. You're welcome. Since this is going to be a pretty short video, go grab a nice warm drink. It's winter in the Northern Hemisphere right now. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, grab yourself a nice warm drink, snuggle in, get your own book to read after this video. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, get a water bottle, an ice cold water bottle. <laughs> cool down a little bit. And we'll just kind of hang out for the next few minutes. So intro outro cam, we'll see you in a few minutes. Good morning, everyone. Um, so I'm getting started on this reread. It's currently 10.03 a.m. I'm just gonna hang out. I'll probably stop in the middle of the day so I can go run to the library and return some books. It's really rainy out right now. So if all this footage from this morning is super dark, that's why. I'm excited to read it again. It's been a few years since I've read it. I've probably read this series four or five times. The last time I read it was a few years ago though. I am excited to be diving back in, seeing Mo and Maggie again. Also something I found out in my research of doing this, Cornelia Fuque, the person who wrote this, just released a fourth one in Germany, because that's where she's from. So it's not out in English yet, but hearing that a series that was finished probably 15 years ago maybe a little more. A series that was finished 15 years ago and like all of a sudden it's like, oh, there's another one. Like 
I'm very excited. It'll probably be a long time before I get to read it, but I'm sure I'll take you guys on a reading vlog for when that happens. So I'm going to go ahead and get started and I will I'll probably give you an update around the one third mark. I think I'm just gonna sit and see how much I can read in one go. We're back. Uh, it is now 11.33. I had to do some things, but I am kind of at the the one the one fourth point. So the book is like 530 pages. I'm on page uh, I'm on page 130. So some things that are sticking out to me already. I love the character of Dustfinger. He is so well written. He is not. He's very much an anti-hero. He's like the typical anti-hero arc. He is so good. We just met Capricorn, like in book, who's also an excellent villain. Like he's he's a very memorable one. He's been one that I have thought about since I was since I first saw the movie. Uh, and then Maggie is always a favorite. Mo is also always a favorite. And then just like reading and knowing where Eleanor starts versus where she kind of goes like where she ends up is really good. Plot lot wise we just got to the point where Dustfinger brought Maggie and Eleanor in the book to Capricorn's village. So we're just getting in the point where we're like meeting a lot of the villains like Basta and Capricorn. Another thing I really like about this book it talks so lovingly. It's so f interesting. The author very clearly loves books. There's already been several quotes that I have read that have just been like, books are the best thing ever. And Eleanor collects books, so she's got a love of books. Book Mo is a book doctor. Of course, Maggie grew up in Mo's household. So it very much just makes me love being a reader. I'm, I'm 130 pages into this probably 1500 page series, and I'm already like, ah, that is the update. So I'm gonna take a break, have lunch, maybe, maybe actually change clothes and get ready for the day and hopefully get another 130 pages done before I have to go run some errands. So yeah. went out and I ran a few errands. I went to the library too, but I made it about halfway through the book. I believe I am on page like 260 out of 530. Yeah, we just met Finoglio, um, who's an interesting character. I still like, he's a very medium character to me still after all of these years. So, but yeah, he just got back. He is about to meet Dustfinger. Also, what a crazy situation that would be. Like, imagine you wrote a book and then one day you just got to meet the character that you created, your, your high fantasy character that you created. That's literally crazy. I also was reading this and I remember the plot of this, of like Encart, the original one, really, really well. Um, I guess it's just stuck with me. But while I was reading this, I was like, I don't remember what happens in Ink Spell or Ink Death. <laughs> 
So it's gonna be a learning experience. So I'm halfway through. I am going to get started on the next uh, quarter of the book. I have bought some bags of grapes, so I'm not gonna eat this whole thing, but I'm gonna eat some grapes, chill and hang out. And I will talk to you guys after I finish the next quarter of the book. just finished page 400 um, so we're about three-fourths of the way through the book I still love it I have such a place in my heart for Dustfinger he is so bizarre like he I don't know how into spoilers I want to get I guess I am reading a trilogy so I'll try and keep it as low-key as I can but the craziest mindset is oh well Silvertongue slash Mo pulled me out of my world so why don't I just steal his wife? Him being a total coward all of the time, it makes for such a compelling story. Like he is a great character. Um, but Maggie just figured out she could do what Mo does. She like pulls Tinkerbell out of his story. And now Capricorn's like, you're the person who's gonna come get my assassin. Also the shadow, Maybe this is just memory of the movie. The shadow is kind of a scary entity. It's made of all the ashes of his victims and it kills for him whenever he wants. Kind of spooky. Well, I have about 130 pages left. Um, so I'm looking like I'm gonna get it done in the next hour and I will update you then. So if you can't tell already, it's definitely winter in the Northern hemisphere because it's super, super dark. So, apologies for that. It is 5.22 and I have finished. It's just as good as I remember. There are lots of characters that I really like. I really like Mo and Dustfinger, who I've mentioned several times at this point, and then Maggie and Farid, who comes from uh, 101 Arabian Nights, like he is pulled from there. He is one of my favorites. He doesn't have a whole lot to do in the first one, but I'm excited to see him again in the second one. And um, I really like Teresa. Teresa shows up more in the next two. Things I remember, I believe I remember. I think Basta becomes the main villain, I think. <laughs> but the magpie, Capricorn's mother, is still like around. I don't know if she becomes like the main villain, but I know she's still around. I rem I feel like I remember they go into the world of Vinkart because I, I think you see Finoglio again. There's two more books. I am excited. These might be ones with fresh eyes. Well, that is the end of me reading Inkheart. It's still, I think it still definitely ranks up there. I'm gonna continue reading all three of them. I ended up not feeling, I ended up not feeling very good the next day, so I only made it about a third of the way through Ink Spell. So some things that I really enjoyed, that I still really enjoy. I think the characters in this first book are so good. They each have clear motivations, clear desires. I love their affinity and love for books. I mean, Eleanor literally treats her books like her children and like one of the most heartbreaking sequences in the books is when she gets home and tons of her valuable books have been just burned. What else did I really like? I love Dustfinger. He only gets better in the next few books. So if you, do, if you do check out this first book, I totally recommend reading the rest of the series. I love a character that is 
honest about its cowardice. So many times we get heroes who are just like endlessly brave and it's not so much the case in this book. Meggie is brave, but I would realistically say she is the only one who's super brave. Risa, I think can also be quantified as brave, but Mo, everything Mo does is out of interest to keep him or his daughter safe. He doesn't necessarily make choices that he makes for other people, just for him and Maggie, primarily Maggie. Farid, even though he's not in a lot of the books, is, he's such a good character. He only gets more interesting as the books go on. You get a lot more of his point of view in like Ink Spell and Ink Death. It's just, I don't know if the plot is necessarily like, the most outstanding. I think I've got the rose-colored nostalgia glasses on. I don't know if the plot is one that's like twists and turns, but the three main villains, Basta, the Magpie, Mort Mortola, Mortala, something like that, and Capricorn are all excellent villains. They definitely keep the, keep the terror hyped. The concept of writing a book based on well, not a book based on, but a book within a world and then including the author of that book is crazy. And then making him a main part of the book and eventually, spoilers, making him get sucked into his own creation, like that is genius. I still can't stop thinking about this book and just being like, whoa, I never would have thought of this. It's a very, very good book. Now, I know in the intro of this video, I talked about how much I loved the movie. That being said, I saw it once when I was eight. So I would recommend the movie, but it's been a long time. So if it's a terrible adaptation, don't, don't at me. It definitely is such a memorable story. The next two are less memorable. Like I'm, I'm already reading Ink Spell and stuff like that. And it's, I'm reading it and I'm like, whoa, this is different than I remember. Still really interesting. I mean, they go into the world. They get read into the book. It is one of my childhood favorites for a reason. It, the action does not slow down. The pacing is just like bam, 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 bam. If you ever just want an easy read, a nice read to read on one of these rainy days like it is outside my apartment right now, Ink Heart is definitely one that I would recommend. But yeah, that is the end of this reading vlog. Let me know if you liked this video. I'd love to do more reading vlogs. I'm not sure I wanna do it with a reread for a while. I'd rather try it with a new book. So if you have any books, book recommendations, please put them down in the comments. I would love to hear them. Check out some of my other videos. Like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell if, I, if you enjoy what I'm doing. And go, go reread your favorite childhood book. Go find it at the library and go reread your favorite childhood book. I will see you all later. Bye!